Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday, May 14th. Welcome to PE today. Today, we are going to continue on with our look at nutrition. We have our mindfulness component. Uh, there's a workout, and we will talk about day 14 of the push up and squat challenge. And of course, we'll finish with the assessment. So, our objectives today. Uh, gain an understanding of how foods affect the body, and a brief introduction to different styles of nutrition. We'll take a look at micronutrients. Uh, we're going to practice the uh, mindfulness piece, and you'll increase your muscular strength and endurance. All right, I realize that I've been, often leave this part out, the why. And this is really the most important part. Why? Why are we taking a look at what we're looking at today? Really, when it comes to nutrition, a basic understanding of nutrition will serve you for your lifetime. Um, things, Little things change here and there, but if you understand the basics, you can use that um, to protect your health, improve your health uh, for your lifetime. Right? You'll look better, you'll have less disease, you'll be fitter, and able to enjoy life more. All right, two comments here that are important to remember. The first one, food is fuel for your body. That's it, nothing more. It's fuel. If you enjoy food, that makes it even better. But the underlying thing is food is fuel for your body. Just like we put gasoline into a car, or now we have electric cars, you charge the battery. You can't overfill your tank. Obviously, as humans, we can. So we have to think of food as fuel. Only put in as much as you need. The other one, you can't out-exercise poor nutrition. What does that mean? Right? You can't go out and eat uh, like a garbage disposal and figure, oh, I'm just gonna go out and, and work that off. That is a recipe for disaster, right? Even Michael Phelps, the uh, former, was a 20 time gold medal Olympic swimmer, he was eating thousands and thousands of calories a day. Um, but when he stopped competitively swimming, he had to cut way back on that. Um, it just wasn't, wasn't a, a feasible situation for him. So keep in mind, you cannot out-exercise poor nutrition. Right, as we looked at last Tuesday, uh, we have macronutrients and we have micronutrients. So let's take a quick look at our macronutrients. We have carbohydrates, which when it comes down to it, it's cheap energy. We have protein, uh, they're the building blocks for the body. And we have fats, which is dense energy and insulation. All right, so some of the questions uh, people asked were about different eating plans. Now, I call them eating plans for a reason because it's a lifestyle choice. Uh, diet has a tendency when people use that term, the term diet, it is really a temporary situation. People want to uh, quote diet until they get to where they are, and then they're going to go back to eating and doing the, the same things that they were beforehand. Um, so eating plan is a better way to look at it. All right, so I've listed here six. We have the vegetarian or vegan diet. Obviously, this is um, vegetables, fruits. That's it. If someone is vegan, they're not eating any animal products at all. Uh, no eggs, no milk. A vegetarian may be having some of those. They may al allow eggs, milk, and cheese. We have a low-carb, low-carbohydrate eating plan. And this is where someone restricts the amount of carbohydrates they have in their uh, daily uh, eating to usually less than 100 grams of carbohydrates. Um, and often even less than that, less than 50 grams of carbohydrates. The next one is a high-fat diet, which is also often combined with a low-carb diet. It just means you are consuming 
a high percentage of your calories from fat. The next one down, we have high protein. This is often also uh, combined with a low carbohydrate diet. Again, it's just a, a, a higher percentage of your caloric intake is, is protein. Okay, There's the seafood diet. And I put this one in, a, in as a joke just because I see food, I eat it. So, or I should say eating plan, not diet. Uh, the seafood plan, and that's just person who will eat whatever there is, whenever there is. And the last one, I'm referring to it as packaged food. Uh, really what it is, is a meal plan program. Um, usually they revolve around some type of a diet, um, professional diet program like Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig, where individuals purchase all their meals from that company. Now, pluses and minus of the pluses and minuses of these. Well, unfortunately, with the packaged food one, oftentimes these individuals never really learn to think about their food. They just know, hey, if I eat this package, I'm okay within the guidelines that that company has given them. Okay, But if they don't have that packaged food, they are really unable to fend for themselves. The seafood diet, excuse me, the seafood eating plan, right? You're going to get what you get. If, if uh, there's donuts around, you're going to eat donuts. If it's pizza, you're going to eat pizza. If it's a, a large salad, great, you'll eat that. So they all have uh, different, different pluses and minuses to them. Now, let me go back. There is not one specific eating plan that will that's perfect for everyone. There are individuals that are vegetarian and vegan for um, conscientious reasons. They don't believe that people should eat meat, and that's fine. They're healthy, and they function well on that. Others function better on a high-protein diet. Right? Some people really like their meat. Great. Okay. As long as it is effective and it's keeping the individual healthy and well, that's going to be okay. So I know that's disappointing to a couple people who asked, well, what's the, the best eating plan? All right? We'll get into that a little bit more, but there isn't one set specific one perfect for everybody. All right, I was asked how to eat healthier. The first one is to be mindful about what you eat, right? Pay attention. What are you eating? What are you putting in your mouth? The other one is why are you eating? Are you eating because you are actually hungry? Are you eating because you're in a social situation? Are you eating because you are upset or anxious and you feel you've got a comfort food for you. So pay attention to really what it is that you're eating and what is causing you to eat. Okay. The next one is to how to eat healthier is to plan ahead. Plan ahead, plan your meals. Now those of you that you have a parent at home that uh, prepares meals for you. You may be a little bit limited. Uh, you may have, you may help out in the kitchen. You may have some input into what you get to eat at home. If so, great. Talk to whoever is uh, helping or whoever is cooking the meals, and that may be you. But plan ahead, so you know that okay, breakfast, lunch, dinner, or only dinner, whatever it is you're eating, that you can plan for a healthier choice okay the next one ask for help from family and friends let them know hey you know what I'm trying to eat uh, eat healthier okay? I want to be uh, able to do X Y and Z right I want to lose weight or maybe you're trying to gain weight right 
ask them for help and for their support. So, you know, a true friend isn't going to, if, if you decided that you want to be a vegetarian, a true friend isn't going to keep waving a hot dog in front of your face saying, come on, you know, you want a hot dog. They're going to support you and respect your, your choices. So that support will, will help you. Uh, and the next one, use the internet for meal ideas. There are thousands and thousands of websites that have um, recipe, recipes and meal plans that will fit within the foods you enjoy um, in a healthy style. So take some time, search, uh, use Almighty Google, and and look at those. Look at some recipes. Find ones that you think would be tasty. Try them out, and, and you can start to um, you can start to learn to cook. As you cook food, you begin to appreciate your food uh, more as well. So keep that in mind. A couple I didn't add in here. Um, eat at home. <laughs> the more you eat out, usually the less healthy the food is going to be. Right? Now another question I was asked was, if I eat something, if I make a poor choice of food, can I counteract that with a healthier food choice? There are a few ways to look at this. One, you are eating for a lifetime. So if you have, if you are choosing a food that isn't as healthy because it's someone's birthday or it's your favorite food that your abuela makes, that's okay, right? Um, obviously, you don't want to be eating it all the time, but every once in a while, in general, is going to be okay for you it's probably good for you, at least mentally. Um, there are some individuals that work well with depriving themselves. They say, no, I'm not. They have the great discipline. They say, you know what? I'm not going to eat um, any sugar. Okay. And it works for them. There are others that are able to have a single cookie. And they're like, great, that's fine. There are others that if they have one cookie, that means they're probably going to have 20 cookies. So you need to understand your own eating habits and uh, you can make that decision if you should cut that out completely or uh, limit it. All right, let's take a look at our micronutrients. We have two types of micronutrients. We have vitamins and we have minerals. Now, the vitamins, there are essential vitamins for your body function. Vitamins A, B, C, D, E, and K. Now, what they do for you, they function do lots of different things. Um, they, your blood vessel health, the health of your skin, the elasticity of your skin, um, your ability to see how you your body um, um processes light, all these things, there are lots of things that the um, that vitamins do for you. Um, and in this setting, there are way more things uh, for that we could talk about that would take hours and hours. But what I'd like you guys to do, you're going to look up how vitamins A, B, C, and D are used in the body. Okay, and that's going to be part, it's going to be in the assessment. Right, so you're going to have to find out what those uh, four vitamins do, and just in general, and that will be uh, part of the So you do have a little bit of research to do. Next one are minerals. So here's uh, a handful of some of them. I'll read a few of them. Sodium, chloride, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, iron. Right, Some of the uses of these, how they're used in the body, um, they help building bones, um, they help build blood, muscles, some of them act as anti-inflammatory, uh, that means that they reduce swelling in the body. Some of them affect the immune function. Now for the minerals, you guys have to, have to uh, look up research three, these three um, minerals, calcium, iron, and potassium. And again, 
I want you to take a look and see how they are used in the body. Right, um, and I haven't put this in here before. Um, I've failed to do it, but I made sure today. This is coming from headspace.com. If you are enjoying this, if you are getting some value out of it, they do offer a student uh, plan, which I believe is $10 a year, uh, which is a fantastic deal. I believe um, a monthly plan for adults is like $12, $12, something like that. So nine, ten dollars for a year, that's a pretty good deal. Again, if you are if you're getting a lot out of it and find it very useful, I highly recommend taking a look at it. Um, the app works on both Android and um, iOS, and they do have the ones that we are doing, there is a those are free, so you can download the app and you can do the um, these 10 at any time without a charge. But if you, again, if you want to get more into it or get more out of it, there is like a $10 per year option for students. All right, let's take a look. Think of the mind as a still pool of water. Each thought is like a raindrop. It creates a ripple on the surface. If it starts raining very hard or is perhaps a little windy, then the pool might become so cloudy that we can't see what's on the bottom. But the potential to return to our still pool of water is still there. In fact, by training the mind, the ripples naturally begin to slow. And as the surface of the pool becomes still, it gets easier to see what's beneath the surface. Sometimes we might like what we see, at other times, well, maybe not so much. Now, occasionally finding things we don't like may sound off-putting, but it's really important because it's part of letting go of those things. Accepting what's in our mind also helps us to be less critical of ourselves. It can even help us to be less critical of others. So we start to feel more content in life to experience more harmonious relationships and to be more at ease with the world around us. Hi, and welcome back to The Basics and to Session 9. Now, as you've probably experienced over the last few days, the more we witness the mind, the more we see the more we see clearly, we're able to recognize perhaps thoughts with a little more clarity, perhaps starting to notice emotions a little more easily. And in seeing these things, we can respond in a few different ways. The helpful way to respond to these is from a place of non-judgment. So just seeing it, witnessing it, and allowing it to unfold or to pass by. The more we can do this, the more the process sort of has a sense of ease to it. The more relaxed the mind feels, the more comfortable the body feels. If we in any way sort of judge it or get involved in thinking about the thought or the feeling, then the mind just tends to get even busier, even noisier. We might start to feel some agitation in the body. So as much as possible, just allowing thoughts and feelings to come and go not thinking about them, not adding more noise, more tension, just allowing them to do their own thing. Even when they're perhaps a little difficult, even when they're more challenging, it takes a bit of practice. But over time as we do this, it gives the mind the space it needs to calm down, to find some sort of space, if you like. Right now, though, make sure that you're sitting somewhere where you're not going to be disturbed. We're going to begin with the eyes open. Nice, soft focus, aware of the space around you. And then when you're ready, just taking a couple of nice, big, deep breaths. In through the nose 
and out through the mouth, focusing on the lungs as they expand and fill with air. The body inhales. And on the muscles in the body as they soften with the exhalation. And with the next out breath, just closing the eyes, thinking into the body, feeling the weight of gravity pressing down, soles of the feet on the floor, the hands and the arms on the legs. Pausing for a moment to notice any sounds, not thinking about them, just noticing. And then just bringing the attention back to the body. So as always, just checking in with the body. How does it feel right now? Any obvious sense of lightness, lethargy, restlessness or stillness? And just as we've done in the previous days, we're going to start at the top of the head and just gently scan down towards the toes. Building up a picture of the body, but also noticing as we scan downwards whether there's a particularly strong mood, emotional flavor to the mind today. Noticing when the mind's wandered. And back to the body as you scan down towards the toes. And then just settling the attention on the breath. Nothing to do now, just resting the mind on that rising and falling sensation. Noticing where you feel it. And starting to notice whether each breath long or short. And then just beginning to count the breaths as they pass, just up to ten each time, and then starting again at one.
just allowing the thoughts to come and go. No good, no bad, whatever arises in the mind. Noticing when the mind's one. Just letting go of that focus on the breath and just for a few seconds allowing the mind to do whatever it wants to do. And then just gently bringing the attention back to the body again. Just coming back to those physical sensations, that contact, body against the seat or the floor. Perhaps the soles of the feet on the floor, the hands and the arms on the legs. It's starting to become more aware of the space around you again, any sounds, any smells. And in your own time, when you're ready, you can just gently open the eyes again. As always, just take a, a moment, enjoy that moment, notice how different the body and the mind feels when you take some time out. And as you reflect on today, just noticing how the mind tends to react to different types of thoughts, whether some thoughts it gets excited about, perhaps some thoughts it feels fearful about, or there's some resistance there. And knowing that when we are able to just sort of step back and allow that thought or allow that feeling to pass by, all of a sudden, that process of letting go begins. Because it doesn't matter how much we want to be free from a particular thought, a particular feeling. If we, if we resist it, then we simply create more conflict in the mind, greater sense of tension in the body. So training the mind is about stepping back, about becoming more familiar with this idea of, of observing rather than trying to change it or control it. And with this practice... This process or skill over time becomes quite effortless. I look forward to seeing you back here for your next session, session 10. You have five exercises, and you're going to do four rounds of one minute of exercise, one minute of each exercise. So total work time today is going to be 20 minutes. So the five exercises, we have push-ups. You're going to do a deadlift. Obviously, that one's going to be weighted. You're going to do jump squats, a plank hold, and then I want you doing weighted lunges as well. So you're going to count your total reps per round. So maybe in that first minute of push-ups, you complete 20 push-ups. Okay? You move on to the deadlift. Right, start that first deadlift at 21, 22, 23. Maybe after the, the deadlifts, you're at uh, 45 total. 
So keep a running count for all five exercises. Write it down at the end of each round. So you should have a total of four big numbers, right? Total number of push-ups, deadlifts, jump squats, plank hold, and lunges in, um, in one minute. Now the plank hold, you're going to get credit for one or none. Okay, if you're able to hold the full minute, give yourself uh, credit for one. If you couldn't hold the full minute, so if you had to break at some point, um, you just get it, get zero. Okay. Yeah, and this will be part of the assessment as well. Now we're in the middle of the challenge. We're almost halfway through. Today is day 14 of the progressive overload challenge. So today you're going to be doing 14 push-ups, 28 squats, and yes, you can count the push-ups that you do in the conditioning piece as part of this challenge. Okay. Make sure it's great technique though. If it's not great technique, you cannot count them for the challenge. All right, for the assessment, you need to research vitamins A, B, C, and D, and the minerals calcium, iron, and potassium. How are they used in the body? Okay. And you can find the link in Schoology for the assessment, as well as the slides, this, this slideshow, and if you'd like to see a replay so you can hear the lovely sound of my voice, you can find it on the YouTube channel and on Schoology. Have a wonderful day, guys.